Hey guys, you're Rexy and welcome back to another Mindflow tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be moving from this quitting bot that we left off episode four with to our multibot script. So the main topic for today is going to be refactoring all of our code so that it fits into a class such that we can easily create multiple instances. The reason why we want to do this is so that we can run multiple bots at once. Currently, this quitting bot can run multiple bots at once. We'd have to run a different copy of the script every time. We don't want to do that. We want to be able to just plug in a bunch of account details and it'll, they'll, they'll all run the same essentially, all on one script. To do this, we've made a few changes. I'm going to go over those briefly right here. The first thing that we've done, the major thing that we've done is we've changed from a um, just creating a, a function here, I guess, in, in a bot to actually creating a class. So we have a class called mcbot. And for those who haven't gone and looked at classes yet, if you're newer to JavaScript or if you're newer to programming in general, you probably haven't. A lot of the time people see them as not necessary, but they can be very useful in some cases. And I strongly suggest that you go ahead and take a look at those. There's a bunch of documentation online on how classes work. Feel free to go to look at that. You don't quite have to look into inheritance or anything like this, but just having a general idea of how classes work will be very helpful. Now, if you don't want to go do that, classes are very simple. They're essentially a template that you create, and then you use what's called a constructor, create instances of that template. So think of a class, in this case, mcbot, as a bit like a factory, a factory that creates uh, Minecraft bots. And any time that we put in account details into, into this uh, constructor, what it will do is it'll spit out a new bot. However, we can keep giving it more and more uh, account details, or in this case, I think we're still using just usernames. Uh, we'll move into a later episode to using an actual account. And uh, we can keep giving it more and more usernames. And then what will happen is it'll just keep spitting out bots for us, which is very useful for when we want to um, do multibotting, which is the topic of this video. It's uh, multibotting. For those who don't know, multibotting is just when you're running multiple bots at once. So as per usual, we import Mindflare at the top, as you can see here. And then we changed const to let because someone on my um, in my stream chat was yelling at me, so we changed that. And you notice we took out the username. That's because we're actually going to be feeding in username through a different uh, way later on. So these are just the bot arguments that are the same no matter what bot is running. So all of the bots that come out of this factory uh, named mcbot will all have these things in common, but they might have different other things. But those other things that are different, we actually have to pass into a constructor. So because the username on every bot isn't going to be the exact same, obviously it can't, we had to take that out. To initiate the class, it's very simple. I can show you here just uh, by shrinking the inside. If you're on Visual Studio Code, you can just click these arrows here to shrink the uh, code uh, between two uh, uh, curly braces. But we start up the class just with class and the name of the class. And then... Uh, here we have a constructor, which you always define using constructor, and then the arguments it takes in. In this case, we're only giving it a username because that's all we need to give our bots that we're making right now in single player. Later, we'll move into actually passing out a username and password and authentication type and all the normal regular Minecraft account details. But for now, we're still using just, uh, I guess, cracked accounts, if you want to call it that, or fake accounts. And so we're just giving it a username that we create. And then it takes in all the bot arguments that we already have hard-coded. And then it runs this function called initBot. Now, what is initBot? InitBot does two things. It runs our createBot function and our init events. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that we're using this a lot. This specifically refers to that one instance, that one individual instance that is created by the class. So anytime we're doing anything, really, we want to put this in front of it because when the bot is running, it's going to read through the code and it needs to know that you're telling that bot specifically what to do. You're not just saying do this stuff. You're saying, I want you this specific bot with this name, this instance of the bot to do the this action. And so we're using this as in this bot should do this thing. Right, so this bot should do this thing, this bot should do this thing, etc. 
And so we use init bot, which initializes the actual bot. So we have our constructor, which just sets up the stuff for our class. Once we're done setting up our class instance, we are now gonna actually create the bot. To do that, we run create bot using all our information, similar to before. As you can see here, we previously created the bot. Where did, create, where did we create the bot? Oh, here, we did mindflare.bot create, and we just gave in the bot arguments. Now we manually pass everything in like this, and we have the this dot in front of it, so it knows um, which bot we're talking to. It knows that we're talking to it specifically. Following that, we then set up our events, which are separate. So we set up the bot, and then we have to load in all our events. In our events, we have four events similarly to before. So those events here are the exact same ones. I'll shrink them so they look identical. You see here, we have all these events. They're basically identical. We just have uh, this in front of some of the stuff. So here we have this.bot.client.socket, this.bot.on, um, this.bot, and I'll, I'll show you guys all of these. So in case you guys want to actually take a look here, we have this.initbot, right? Where previously we just had, ooh, here, just set timeout in a bot. We have this.initbot now, and we need to make it async. Um, this makes it, async or something it does something i don't know uh well i say i don't know i actually do know some stuff but uh not for this video i suppose uh moving on from that i'll show you guys the spawn function we just add a bit of this dot stuff all over the place and same thing with error where we have this dot username and uh such Moving on from that, I'm going to shrink our class here. So this is just like our factory that makes the Minecraft boss. We actually have to pass it in, the information for the bots. Now, we want to keep track of where our bots are. Because let's say we want to tell all of our bots to do something. Let's say we want to tell them to jump. We can't just say jump, right? We have to tell each individual bot to jump. So let's say we have three bots, bot one, bot two, bot three. We can't just say jump, we have to say bot one, jump, bot two, jump, bot three, jump. Now the way to do that is we'd keep all of our bots in an array, and anytime we want them all to do something, we loop through the array and tell them all to do it. Now, really that's not what we're using this for, it's just a storage mechanism to keep our bot objects, so that if we wish to get rid of one, we can get rid of one by deleting it from here, because they only exist here. Uh, we can also get rid of them by, or sorry, we can also do other things such as not get rid of them as uh, creating more by putting them in this container. We can delete them all by just removing this container. We can do a lot of things. Um, essentially, it's just a, a container. The, this array is just a container for us to store the bots inside of. And now we create a very simple for loop. If you don't know what loops are by now, we should probably be learning that. And this is a for loop, so it's just going to run this or whatever's inside the loop this amount of times. So here we said do it six times. So it's gonna run this. And what this does is it adds to our bot array, our, our container for our bots. Push means add to it. Uh, a new bot that has the name hello world underscore and then the uh, index. So this is gonna create six box uh, bots that are all gonna have the names hello underscore world underscore uh, zero hello underscore world underscore one and so on and so forth so it's going to be zero one two three four and five now i'm going to go ahead open up my terminal and i'm going to open up a minecraft and be right back i'm going to just uh, open everything up and i'm going to show you guys how this works when we actually run the script all right as you can see i've opened up a LAN server and the port number is five three five five three so i've gone ahead and put that into the script now we're just going to make sure the script is saved i do that with Control s we're going to go down into our terminal and actually run the script. So I've, I'm in the path, which is has been changed since last episode, but it's now previous underscore scripts. And we're going to run node. And then using node, we're going to run multi-bot.js, just like that. You're going to press enter, and you guys are going to see what's going to happen here. So after it loads a little bit, it's going to create all of our bots. You can see there's six bots, and they all do that thing where they join, say hello, and then they say goodbye, and then they leave. And because of some small delay issues in computing, uh, they're not necessarily in sync. You can see bot zero joined after bot one, uh, 
after bot three and the orders were messed up here you know bot four joined uh, before bot two stuff like this but they all did essentially the same thing they all joined said hello waited three seconds left and uh, or said goodbye and then left and brief reminder real quick there are three links down in the description the first link if you want free easy access to this code it's a github link to the repo where you can actually find this exact code from this episode in fact you can not just find the code for this episode but if you look into the folders a little bit you can find the code for every episode that is currently planned and has been uh, or the code has been made for it essentially uh, i haven't necessarily made videos for all these or i haven't released videos for all these yet so you can go ahead and look ahead at future episodes if you're all cut up and you want to keep going and you don't want to wait for more episodes to come out that's the first link. The second link that you'll find down there, uh, or the second and third link, I suppose, are going to be two Discord links. One of these is going to be to the Xerox to Succeed Discord, where you can ask for help with anything coding related on my channel. You can just talk about when the next video is going to come out if you want. You can give ideas for videos. You can do all sorts of stuff. You can also ask for help. We have a help for uh, a help channel for coding stuff. And then the other Discord link is the PrismarineJS Discord. You can think of this a bit as the MindFlare Discord. They do a lot more than just MindFlare. They do so many cool things. But uh, you can get help from MindFlare stuff if you want more in-depth help from people who are a little bit more experts, I suppose, on the topic. You can go and check that out. And uh, I'm sure you'll get help. I've seen hundreds of people ask for help in there. They have a fancy system going. And I have yet to see anybody not get help or at least be redirected to where they can help themselves uh, in that Discord. That said, that's all I've got for you. See you guys next time. Peace.